Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to briefly explain something you may be hearing a lot about in the news regarding Silicon Valley Bank, but aren't really sure what it means, and the term is a bank run. We'll explain what it is, why it happens, and most importantly, how you can rest assured that you won't lose all of your money. With that said, let's get into it. So first things first, the bank that you deposit your money into doesn't keep it all in the vault. You heard that right, your money isn't actually in the bank, but rather your deposits get used to fulfill other customers' bank loans. I think George Bailey explains it best. You're, you're, you're thinking of this place all wrong as if I had the money back in a safe. I, the, the money's not here. Well, your money's in Joe's house, that's right next to yours, and in the Kennedy house, and Mrs. Maitland's house, and, and a hundred others. Uh, you're lending them the money to build and then they're going to pay it back to you as best they can. Now, what are you going to do, foreclose on them? To comprehend this, it's important to understand the term fractional reserve banking. Realistically, the bank is only required by policy to keep 10% of the money you deposit as liquid cash in the vault. The other 90% can be used to issue loans, invest, etc. So if you deposit $100 into the bank, $10 must go into the vault and then the $90 can be allocated elsewhere. But wait a minute. What if I want to withdraw my full $100 the very next day? Are you saying the bank can't let me do that? Well, if you were the bank's only customer, then yes, that's what I'm saying. But you aren't. The banks typically have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of customers. And if they all deposit $100 in the bank and the bank keeps $10 from each of them in the vault, well then it'd be quite easy for you to go back the next day and withdraw your money. So if it's so easy to go back to the bank and take out your money, then how does a bank run occur? Well, a bank run happens when a lot of people try to withdraw their funds at the exact same time. And since the bank only keeps 10% of your funds on hand, if too many people demand cash, there simply won't be enough in the vaults to fulfill everyone's desire to get their money back. Well, then emotions kick in. People begin fearing the worst, and then everybody rushes to the bank to withdraw their funds, even if they don't really need the money. Panic sets in really quick, and before you know it, the bank is out of cash and out of options. That's what happened to Silicon Valley Bank this past week. So what happens when a bank run occurs? Well, remember, banks are companies. And so when a company can't meet its financial obligations, just like any other firm, it likely results in bankruptcy. But what about all the people who didn't get to the bank in time to withdraw their funds? Is their money just gone? evaporated into thin air never to be seen again? Well, yes and no. Deposits held at a bank are insured, but only to a specific amount per account per customer. It's important that when you set up a bank account, you're aware of what amount is insured. In the case of Silicon Valley Bank, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC for short, $250,000 is insured. This means that any holdings above that threshold are not insured and susceptible to being lost forever. So with this information, what do you need to do to prevent the possibility of losing all of your money? Well, firstly, do some research and see how much of your money is insured. In the United States, the FDIC insures $250,000, but in Canada, the CDIC only insures $100,000. Countries all have different insurance thresholds, so do some research and learn what yours is. Second, diversify your money through multiple accounts. Have you ever heard the phrase, don't put all of your eggs in one basket? Well, in this case, the eggs are your cash and the basket is a bank account. How do you do this in practice? Well, let me tell you. For example, if you have $200,000 and live in Canada, put $100,000 in a checking account and $100,000 in a savings account. Both accounts are insured up to $100,000 and if anything happens, all of your money is safe. If all of your cash is in a single account, this might not be the case. If you're a relatively low net worth individual, such as a student, as I know many of my viewers are, then don't worry, you should be all good. Just focus on those upcoming finals and ace that econ course. If you enjoyed the video and found it informative, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.